Yeah. We're good, Kathy, everybody. Is that screen on? Do we just want to? Everything Everybody's copacetic. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion to uh, call the meeting to order. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Marshall? Aye. Trustee Cole? Aye. Trustee Lankin? Aye. Trustee Lanker? Aye. Mayor Coleman? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, is there any board member that has a conflict of interest or anything they wish to disclose regarding uh, the workshop agenda? I do not. 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 Okay, with that being said, uh, would the deputy clerk please read the open meeting compliance certification for at least Cliff's notes? Let me get it, please. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the public will have opportunities to comment on specific agenda items when they occur in the meeting. They must step in front of the room if physically able. If an attendee is participating via web conference, such as Zoom, please use the Q&A and raise your hand. Speakers must give their name, address, and organization. Uh, for this meeting, we'll limit to three minutes, or two minutes, two minutes. speaking time. Uh, speakers must observe the commonly accepted rules of courtesy, decorum, dignity, and good taste. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, this is a continuation, actually, of um, a series of workshops that have been uh, noticed to the public uh, for the board to work on possibly drafting some legislation to address short-term rentals in our community. The brand names are sort of known as Airbnb or Verbo. Uh, for some of you, but we use the generic term STRs or short-term rentals. Um, we do we have people online as well? One attendee. Okay. Okay. All right. So far. Well, we thank everybody for being here, um, and we would like to have. Um, we may may end sooner than this, but we would like to have a hard stop no later than 7:30, uh, because we would like to be able to bring this back to the board for discussion. Uh, we know people are here to obviously comment and give input. Some of you I know have already given input, and we also have received input directly to the board in the form of emails, which um, I know the board has read and reviewed as well, so we take that into consideration. Um, so uh, with that being said, I would like, um, if people do want to comment, um, we're going to start with the board first, just to kind of pick up a little bit where we left off, but uh, I would like people to comment who have not commented yet. Um, so they have an opportunity as well. Was there anything I missed? I was trying to think when I went over this with you, Alexander. I think we're, it's a starting point anyway for us all. Mayor, can we reiterate the fact mm -hmm. that when they introduce themselves, that they say their name, their address of where they live, and if they want to say their short-term rental address, that's fine as well. But we like both of them. Yeah, rather, your, your actual place where you live, and if you have a, a, an STR in the village, you can say that as well. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so why don't we start with the board, and I know, uh, Trustee Marshall, you had um, given us some comments, oh. and no, I didn't know if, if you wanted to pick up on that in terms of... No, I think I'm pretty comfortable with my um, just feedback and that's okay. the board and see okay. where the conversation goes. Okay. I had a few things, uh -huh. um, just looking at this draft, one question I had was uh, the only if more than 100 feet from a residence. Right now we have that specific to the mixed use Erie Canal. Did we want to have that um, with regards to the TBD as well? That's a valid thought because the TBD does end at a residential mm -hmm. district. At a bus district. So, so I'm thinking, well, I think that would be a more than. Bold sure. than oh, I don't have my cell phone. Would it be the same for upper and? First floor? Um, I, so we have zero for first floor. Um, and unlimited for upper. Unlimited for upper. Both unlimited is our special permit. Um, I just mm -hmm. want to make sure that the upper and the TDD, which is unlimited, would be 100 feet as well. Um, I think that makes sense, Dave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a problem with that. Jeff, are you? Mm -hmm. I've got it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Got Just checking with our I have no problem with that. 
the other question, I know uh, Jeff, I saw the update to the uh, uh, beneficial owner, and I just wanted to make sure that I understand how that all reads. Essentially, the person who lives in a home, whether or not they live in that home, and they're the beneficiary of a structure, right? as in a trust, or an LLC, or uh, it's a family unit, and maybe the son or the daughter own it, but the mm -hmm. parents live in the home. Uh, the beneficial owner is the person who lives in the home. Is that how it's crafted now? Yeah, except for those situations, I think, where it would not be the person who lives in the home is if there was a lifetime interest. There had been a deed over from the parent to the child, and the parent is living there for the rest of their life, but I would not think that they're the beneficial owner. I think you know, under those circumstances, the beneficial owner would be the person to whom it had been deeded. Because where it was different. Hang on one second. Hang on one second. Okay. I mean, that's kind of esoteric. I don't think that's one instance. Okay, yep. Lisa, you're in the So line. I guess my question is, why are we even putting that in there? What was the reason for that? And secondly, um, it says through any contract mm -hmm. arrangement. So I guess I don't understand. Like, so if somebody owns a house and they decide to, to have a contract with a person to be in the house, mm -hmm. is that that would also be a beneficiary? It's called a but then that person who's leasing no. decides to be there, and then... No. I, I don't think that they have the, the ownership interest at that point. I mean, you're, you're going down a pretty uh, mm -hmm. interesting road here with this trying to put beneficial in, interest into this. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was Dave that sort of wanted something in here that dealt with beneficial interest. Yes, Dave, what was so the, dis like, I the discussion is if it's in a trust? Yeah, so if it's in a trust, um, so the question would be, if, if you prevent a resident, in this case, a beneficial resident, so take, for example, Medicaid planning, uh, you have a house and you don't want to have the risk of that house being used for Medicare, Medicaid, trust, right? so you put it into a trust, uh -huh. right? And then you're the beneficial in, interest beneficiary of that during your lifetime but the house is effectively removed from your name, mm -hmm. but you're the beneficiary of use throughout your lifetime. The question is, is would you want to allow that person who's the beneficiary of the use to be able to have a hosted STR? Mm -hmm. Or uh, that, that's one case scenario, or another case scenario could be, um, I'm the one doing the contracts, but Holly owns the house, right? So it's two separate people, but I'm the beneficiary interest of that, right? I think that would apply in this case. Um, and then there's other instances where people will put it into a qualified personal residence trust, or they'll put it into possibly an LLC, uh, but still be the, you know, let's say they're renting their own house back from an LLC. That's a pretty rare instance. But kids, you can deed it to the kids and still live there. You want to allow the parents to have a hosted STR. They're the primary resident. They're here all the time, right? It's their address of record. I'm just trying to be flexible enough to anybody who's living in the community to be able to have a hosted STR. Short term. Yes. Yeah. STR. Yeah. Short yeah. yeah. Raise your hand if you don't understand the acronyms. <laughs> Short term rental I STR. You Oh, and I didn't yeah. That. yeah, that would be a no some term. I don't know what that would be. <laughs> I got, I got not going there. Okay. Yeah, I, I think, yeah. Um, you know, while this is a little bit complicated, I think that uh, what we've got in the code tracks more with intuitively how we would expect things to work, um, where you've got somebody who has a legal arrangement um, that they own the house, uh, and even though it's not direct, you can still use it um, as your own property. Well, I don't particularly like the word contract. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. That's what yeah. bothered me because I wasn't sure what that contract was. Yeah, I guess what we don't want it to do, or what I wouldn't want it to do, is to open up a, a kind of a loophole where somebody is able to have an investment property and then, um, you know, have like a, a groundskeeper or something that is um, occupying the house and then able to um, rent out part of it under those terms. And I think. Jeff, yeah, as, as you're yeah, alluding to, the, the notion of the um, the general contract <laughs> could be more loose than what we would expect. 
And I would just simply say this is to establish the definition of the term owner, not to establish the definition of hosted or unhosted. Mm -hmm. Right. So by doing it this way, having an owner, which is the record or beneficial owner of real property as recorded, from that point you define hosted, right? And so hosted is still the mm -hmm. online residential presence of the owner of the subject residential dwelling during the duration of the retail period, rental period. So I think these, this needs tightening up on mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Lily, you had a no. My question was answered question. when we okay. talked about okay. Policy, okay. So. I'm sure we were covered on that. So, uh, Jeff, you want to revisit that? Maybe take a look at that language in terms of tightening it up a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the action item. The unhosted uh, definition looked good to me. The Maybe just talk. Can we ahead. just go to before because you're down on hosted. Yeah. If we go to short term rental, that very last um, part of that definition, month to month tenancies are not considered short term rental. 30 days plus. So that's where the 30 days comes that's in. That's where the 30 days comes in. Where is, is month to month defined somewhere? Is that uh, clear that that's always uh, more than 30 days? It says 30 days in there already. Yeah. Why are we doing month to month anyways? Does it seem well, redundant? Well, there's no month to month tenancy. Is mm -hmm. you know, I mean, but if you're at the end of the rental period and there's no additional lease. It's a tenant at will. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you can go month to month. I got yeah. it. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have to define long term rental for short term. That's the only thing. Everything else is considered. Got it. Okay. What else? The, um, but coming to the hardship appeal, um, so I think my understanding of this is. Hold on, Dave. Can we just go yeah. in order? Because I've, I've oh, got sure. a question. Yeah, we're still on that same in. page. Yeah, jump in. So 155-4, regulation and controls. Mm -hmm. So let's. So that's that's still that. There is a, a blank there. Blank there. That's mm -hmm. the thing we need to talk about. That's C, short-term rental of unhosted, owner-occupied, single-family dwellings shall be limited to, we talked about 30, 60, 90 days per calendar year for such dwellings. So right now we still don't have anything in there. So I think we need to talk about what the board feels is appropriate for that space. So my thought on this might be simple, but the only place right now that in my mind that I'm likely to support unhosted short-term rentals, just given how all of this is shaking out, um, is likely to be in the TDD and the um, uh, MUEC. What's so, TDD? Sorry, uh, traditional downtown district uh, that's up here. And then the MUEC is the mixed use Erie Canal. So essentially, uh, said slightly differently, it would be any district that is not considered a residential district, uh, but allows residential um, uh, living, mixed use. So it would be along Main Street mm -hmm. in our commercial area and uh, along Shane Place, yeah, along Shane Place, pretty much. I mean, you know, to, okay. that's how it's sort of been broken out in terms of um, how we're looking at zoning and what can happen. Very much the same locations that hotels, B and Bs, mm -hmm. or they're already um, there, like the Tomatis down mm -hmm. there. Right. That yeah. were, would be permitted. So it's the idea of a transient visitor. Well, we want to welcome them. We want to have them in zones that are currently able to have hotels and, and the like. The one difference being there is a limited office residential, which is the district that Village Hall is in, the buildings across the street, and then just just down here past the bed and breakfast over the canal, with two properties on the left and the one on the right. We have a upstairs we could probably Those are an L. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on one second, it's still at the board. I, yeah, okay. just at the board. And then then we'll, we'll reach out, okay? But so there's, we'll, we'll get you. Thanks. So there's this residential limited office zone that connects sort of the traditional downtown with the mixed use area canal. Mm -hmm. We recognize some sort of fluidity there. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe we're at two um, mm -hmm. at current for short-term rentals in that particular zone. Plus one B&B and the hotel. And, right, which are uniquely separately special permitted and not limited in number, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so I think with regards to the mixed use Erie Canal as well up here, it would be unlimited by special permit, similar to how a hotel structure mm -hmm. uh, would be. Um, so the reason I'm getting that from the answer 
the short-term rental of unhosted owner-occupied single-family dwellings, I think the answer to that is shall not be limited. Of unhosted owner-occupied. So we are 155-4, paragraph C. 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 Okay, but B is the one that where it talks about the definition, which is the short-term rental of hosted, and I'm I'm proposing owner-occupied single-family dwellings is permitted. The short-term rental of. It's unhosted. Uh, so yeah, you can read this two different ways, right? The short-term rental of unhosted owner-occupied single-family dwellings. I think the way it's written here in yep. this draft is to say the short-term rental of hosted, I also added owner suggested, owner-occupied single-family dwellings is permitted. Wait, are we on B or C? Oh, I thought we, we are on C. B right now. We're on C. Oh, we are on C. C. So Lily, C okay. then deals with the number of days. For, for a ah. unhosted. So to Correct. Lily's point, Lily, to your point, B, we could insert after hosted before single family owner occupied. Yes. Yes. Just for clarity. Okay. Well, I, I, I agree with that clarification. Jeff, does that make sense to you as well? That's fine. Okay. So when then when you jump to C mm -hmm. and you're talking about the unhosted, yep. so in that in that instance we are deciding or trying to determine as a board mm -hmm. how many days that should be limited. Mm -hmm. What that limit is. Correct. Currently in our code, mm -hmm. it's 15 days. That's what exists currently in our code. Yes. Your home, my home, whatever, whoever wants to rent their home out for 15 days out of the year, that is permitted. And that's kind of for special. Without a special, like, you know, we have the PGA here. Right. You know, yeah. Whatever. You can just that's do it. Right. So that's one, already allowed. Yep. So, Jeff, this is a question of clarity for this whole code. Is it easier to put 15 there? Or have it be unlimited, and the reason I'm, it sounds odd to say that, but would we just put something else in this section that says this section of the code shall not apply to the first 15 days of any rented residence? And then, because when I read this, I'm thinking, you know, what if somebody owns a single family dwelling on the Vixie Uciri Canal or in the second floor somehow they create condo structure and so they own a second floor or they buy one of these homes here in the limited office um, residential so they buy a home across the street and it's permitted to have a short-term rental there and wouldn't you want that to have the ability to rent you know throughout the entire year that's the intent of allowing them in these districts so you could have a single family dwelling that you, you can already yeah. rent it long term right because they're in that you allow for a rental short term Oh, for short term. Right? For short term. With a special permit. With a special permit. Mm -hmm. So then, I, I'm just trying to figure out this this C. Are, are are we using this line to limit it to 15 to make sure nobody goes over the 15 threshold, or are we using this line? Uh, were we using this line in a different context a couple of meetings back where we were thinking we would have unhosted single family homes in residential districts where people could rent them out up to 60 days or 30 days. And I think some of our conversation has lent towards a shorter duration. I, I think there might be two different things here, Dave. Mm -hmm. um, one would be the clarification of this section to maybe add the wording uh, without special permit. So this is the allowance by right mm -hmm. for up to X number of days right. mm -hmm. that would cover without that. special permit. That would cover your piece. Would we be able to, does, does that make sense to clarify this? I think so. Um, and then, and, yeah. Okay. So, Dave, do you want to go ahead? Yeah. Okay. So, 155 4 C. Mm -hmm. That line. Just make sure we all understand what this refers to. Okay. This refers to when she was just, just used snowbirds. This really is the snowbird of this. Because it's owner occupied, it's unhosted. Mm -hmm. They're gone. Yep. Right. But they're, they're it's their private. It's, it is. They live there. We have to kick back to that, yeah. that definition. Make sure you're all comfortable with that. Uh, but they're they're primarily going to rent it when they're not there. Okay. So I, I guess. Um, so I'm, I'm not. So let's keep the language and just put 15, which is equal to the rental it's permit. Already, yeah, it's so already there. This, this is what I'm thinking is as far as the number of days and, and maybe this is where there's a little bit of a disconnect too. Um, 
I, I don't, my, my concern is that even leaving this at uh, 60 days or even 30 days, a common case for Airbnb is going to be to rent out on weekends for higher rates. And if you're talking about 30 days, you're still talking about several months. Basically, you can rent out your house for weekends all summer. Um, and I'm not sure that that's what families would expect. So I'm, I'm thinking that what we might want to do is go even lower to the 15 day um, threshold and, uh, and, and leave the allowance there. Unless we say consecutive for the snow Can I just take it out? Or you can take it out. Take it out because you've got a 15 day. Right, that's what we're saying. Okay, so why do you have it in there? It's kind of- So you don't need to state it. it. All right, it's, it's already in the code. Right. Okay, and you were gonna say something else. No, I, you're good. That was it, no. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. So we don't need it. It's already okay. code, Hang on. right? So we can eliminate it. Mm -hmm. We can eliminate it, because yeah. it's- Because it's already, it's already covered in code. And, and that's if we all code. agree on 15 days. Right? I do. If we wanted more than 15 days, we leave it in there. And this is, this is for, okay, so the discussion is for um, essentially snowbirds, because we know we have a number of people who own properties in the village, and they do like to go south for some portion of the year. Um, and it, it enables them, if they want to keep their home, their primary residence here in the village, to rent it out for no more than 15 days? That's, yeah, that's the well, what's on the display. No, this, this is no. not the only option for those individuals, right. of course. The other option would be to um, rent for a normal monthly period. So if right. they're gone for six months or whatever, they always have the ability to rent for So a single, single long-term rental for a six-month period? For three. For three. Or three, three, 30 months. Yeah. Three, three, three what? Thirty month. I mean thirty three day. day. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Three thirty day. I took a left turn there. <laughs> so whatever way you want to do. day rentals. The thirty days are <laughs> as long as it's okay. So less than. 30. It'll be interesting to see where the market would be for that. Yeah. Right. So because I'm not so sure there would be. And that's okay with me. Yeah, okay, so that's okay with, with the trustees. Okay. So wait, the market, I, I don't understand, say that, say that a question again, so you don't understand where the market would be. So if somebody were to be gone and wanted to rent their house out for three months, right, say January, February, March, they'd be, they'd no, be able to do I, that, I just, right? Of course I understand okay. that. I don't know that there's a market for it. Right. That's where I'm going. Oh, I see. I don't know that there's a market for it. Yeah. So if you have someone that's owned a residence here and they've lived in the village for, you know, 30 years and now they want to, you know, be away in the winter months. Um, it may actually, you know, there wouldn't be the opportunity. It just wouldn't present itself because of the way uh, right now the board's looking at that. I think it's fairly restrictive, actually. Mm -hmm. That that's just that's my opinion. Yeah. Well, a lot of times this is the challenge, right? A lot of times the cost of maintaining multiple properties without a profit engine behind the second property or the primary property. Um, creates the turnover in properties and moves generations younger and brings in families. Whereas if you, to the, to the mayor's point, if instead you want to look at favoring the residents that have been here of old to create a profit opportunity to stay and be that snowbird where this becomes either, you know, maybe not their primary property or secondary property or even stays primary by creating a profit engine or a good market for the sale of that, you prevent that natural turnover in communities and you can actually age potentially beyond what the normal course would be because you're creating that business venture opportunity for the owner. I don't necessarily mind that to some degree, but I think this is where if you put 15 days, uh, that is how many, two and a half months? What do we figure? Mm -hmm. Three, that's about a month, month and a half. So you, with 15 days, mm -hmm. You can still rent at premium prices for premium weekends and potentially jam a 30-day rental in between. My guess is a 30-day rental is probably half the rent that you'd get on four weekends of rent, um, but it should, you think, still be there. Yeah. Uh, but I think 15 days, if we wanted to, I mean, this is the type of thing that you move up to like 30 on, mm -hmm. and you can toy with it a little bit, but I'm a little uncomfortable with 60 or 90. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, the board's weighed in on that. What's next? Okay, so we would, I mean, just to have some direction on this, it sounds like the, the majority of the board's in favor of striking this section and leaving the 15-day default in the rest of the code. Is that the case for the rest of the board? Well, I think the majority yeah, feels that way. Um, so days. we would make it 15 days. Okay. And we would do that by scratching this section. 
We don't I, I see. So we would be utilizing what already exists in the right. code. Yes. The only reason to keep that is if three of us believe it should be something more than 15, let's say 30, and then you keep it in and you put 30 down instead of 60. Um, I'm also okay putting 15 here. That way we can take it to um, the vote and age it and already have it embedded in a way where we could raise it if we chose so that's true, to. you can always amend. Right, whereas if mm -hmm. we strike right. it, if we strike it, we don't mm -hmm. have the code written in a way that we could amend it going into the vote. Is that true, Jeff, or should we just strike it if 15 is the majority of the text? It would be less restrictive, so you could change it. That is. If we were to keep it in, whereas if we strike it, we can do so as well. Right. Okay. It's less it's less All right. So let's just strike it and know that we can come back to it if we wanted something different than 15. Okay. Um, are you comfortable with the definition of owner occupied single family building? Okay. Okay, we're talking about owner occupied sink. We're looking at definitions. Like, what is it really? You know, if you're reading the code, you have to know, you know, sort of very clearly what your what these terms mean. So right now, uh, what was that? Owner occupied single family dwelling, Jeff. Yes. Right. A single family dwelling with the record owner maintains as the owner's actual residence for 184 days or more per calendar year. That is the definition drafted for the owner-occupied single-family dwelling. It's essentially six months in a day. Which is typically used in, in many yeah. codes, right? There was a point that the board discussed something longer. Right. I had suggested 275 because yeah. I was finding that in my research that that was popping up quite a bit, the 275. There, there is a strong precedent for things more than 184 in, in terms of lots of code. I'm looking at um, Cold Spring here, which is um, also in, in New York, uh, and that's 260. Um, I, I think we looked at, um, we might have mentioned Los Angeles um, and a couple of other places that do choose longer dates as well. So, so here, here's my thought on that. If we are going to be rather uh, restricted on unhosted Airbnbs, because I do think there is some value to having um, short-term rentals in the community or long-term residents, I'd like to give a little bit of additional latitude to see how this code works out as to whether or not we have owner-occupied single families that do rent rooms in their um, residence. So for me, I think 184 is fine. It's six months in a day, so they're a permanent resident. Okay. I'll just leave it there. I'm fine with that. I'm frankly. fine with that. Okay. Okay. Let's move on, because I know there are people who certainly want to weigh in as well. So, so then uh, the special... I'm wondering, sorry, on, on that point, if there is, um, again, does it make sense to go more restrictive and, and change later? Um, because it seems like we would be able to... Be less restrictive. Mm -hmm. I'd rather stay at 184. I think I'd rather stay at 184, and then we can tweak it if you need to. I mean, you know, it's it, it. Right now, we're anticipating a problem that at this point doesn't exist in the village. So even something like this is more restrictive. Well, so I, I, I think that's a. You know, we're sharing our personal opinions as well, and this legislation reflects those. But I think we have different opinions about. Of course, we do. We've heard different opinions from constituents about mm -hmm. what their perceived problems mm -hmm. are. So the process. Let me understand the process. So if we were to pass it with the existing, mm -hmm. it, then it would go to public hearing, mm -hmm. and then we can bring it back and still make adjustments based on what the public state. As long yeah. as it's less yeah, restrictive. Which would be. Oh, okay. So, so that's why you wanted to do it more restrictive, so that if, after public hearings and we hear public, then we can come yeah, back. Yeah, pull back. Then we could pull back. So if we don't do it more restrictive, then we won't be able to pull back. If we make it six months in a day, that's where we're stuck with when we adopt without changing the legislation and going through the whole thing. And if we say 260 right now, we can make it 184 after the public hearing. So what do you think about that? I'm still fine with 184. So. Yeah, me too. I'm, 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 that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Six I, months in a day. How does the board want to proceed? Do you want to make a motion? For, uh, a proposed change to you? I'm asking the rest of the board. <laughs> <laughs> I need to think about There's this. There's a motion probably direct me to change it to something other than it's not. 
You're not voting on legislation. Anymore. Yeah, it's just a direct job. Okay. Just to see where people lie. Well, do, you, do we feel comfortable maybe doing a little bit more closer to what Lily and Chestnut say and a little bit more than what Dave and even if this were passed into law at six months in a day and we found, oh my gosh, what a mistake. We can amend the legislation. We can bring it back to the public, recognize that we do need to make an amendment and do so. But I, I'm, I am comfortable with 184 days. I think it's a lot easier to have Steve consider whether or not somebody lives here six months in a day than it is for Steve to figure out 275 days. <laughs> I know we've I know we've talked about voting before and using voting as, it, as an it is example. One way, to right? So if in the voting red, right? If you're here six, six months in a day, yeah. this is technically your voting registry. Yes. Community. It's only technically your registry if you're registered to vote. Right. That's correct. Right. If you're registered well. to vote. So I'm just I'm, I'm so saying. You so they be, use that. The voting registry. You're not looking at an that. entire demographic. Right. Right. But if you were to I'm say somebody. I'm just saying that's what they use in, in yeah. that. The, the government uses that. If he voting. were to say to somebody, hey, prove that you're a resident, somebody is challenged that you're here 184 days out of a year, right? Then that resident can easily say, hey, here's my New York State taxes, right? They pay taxes in New York State rather than some other state. Or, that's the way to go. Right, that's, that's the way to go. It's, it's documentation. Super, it's right. super it's easy. Whereas if you're like, 275 days, prove it. Like, yeah. I, it's just impossible. Right, that's I don't what I'm think saying. We want to get so they used that. it another okay, way. Okay, so how do we, where, where are we going with this? How do we want to close this out? Do we know how Dave feels? I mean, you know how I feel. How do we move along? You guys want more days? I, I, I'm fine with this to start. In the absence I'm fine with this of a motion, shall we proceed? Well, to, it's a, to either direct or not. It's either set or not. Are you not? Okay. Hmm? <laughs> I didn't want to if you want to go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, might as well see how everyone feels, sure. and I will make a motion that, let me see what, what, what one are we on here, uh, what section we're in, exactly where this comes up. Definitions. Uh, definitions. Under definitions. Mm -hmm. yep. Of owner-occupied well, single-family okay. dwelling. Thank you. Okay. Um, owner-occupied single-family dwelling, a single-family dwelling which the record owner maintains as the owner's actual residence for. I will make a motion that we change from 184 days to 275 days or more per calendar year. And, and direct our attorney to do. To direct do. our attorney to make that change make in the draft. I'll second the motion. Okay, roll call, please. Trustee Cole? I would have to abstain because I just don't have enough time to think about that. Okay. Trustee Marshall? Nay. Yeah. Trustee Lycan? Aye. Trustee Lanker? Aye. Mayor Plummer? No. It's a tie, it fails. Fail. Which we're in the same place we were both in I like it to be official. <laughs> no, that's good. No, that's good. So everybody will kind of get the <laughs> stage. Okay. All right. um, I want to kind of keep moving because I know we do have yeah, people sure. want to comment. So. Do you want to keep rolling with some things? Um, I just wanted to ask you, Ale permit. Alexandra, thank oh. you so much for sending the NICOM. I just, Did you want to stay following this and then come back to that? Oh, okay, yeah. sure. We can yep. do that way if you want. If we're stay in the legislation. Okay. Yeah, so we're on 155 uh, 4 d special permits. So oh, the yeah, special yeah. permits, this is the process by which somebody could open a new um, or existing, if there are any, uh, short-term rental in the districts identified, the LOR, the VJB, the TDD, sorry for all these acronyms, and the MUEC. So these are different districts that are non-residential but allow for residential in them, uh, limited office residential, the VGB, could somebody... Village Gateway Business. Village Gateway Business. So that's down, that's, oh, thank you. well, that's down like where JoJo's is, if you can read it, and then where Talbot's is. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay. So yep. that's a districting right there. So, yeah, that's all of the JoJo's, Crutch mm -hmm. Street, pretty much everything from the canal going north to the railroad tracks, mm -hmm. right? And both on the left and the right side. And there'll be two permitted there. Does any of that about a residential district? No, it's divided by the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. 
Do we want to allow that? Well, to it does on the west side of Main Street. Well, LOR. Does it still have the railroad tracks right in between, though? No, LOR is a sliver gone by the canal uh, next to the GD on the west of Main Street. Oh, and LOR is a um, limited office. Right? Limited yeah. office. Limited yeah. office residential. Where we're allowing the, we're already allowing that. And so I think in the Gateway business, yeah, it does. So I think in the mm -hmm. instance of the well, LOR so and the Village Gateway business, I think it's okay to not have that be a hundred feet or more, and in part because it's already mixed use. And you know, if you think, for example, the bed and breakfast, that's actually not in the LOR, the limited office or residential. That's part of the um, low density residential. Mm -hmm. So I, I would just as well keep the 100 feet uh, distance out of the two permitted by special permit. And if we have concerns about it, we can take it up in the special permitting process. They're all they're all special permit. Yeah, it's true. But if we mm -hmm. right. Right, right, but if we want to do apply a different standard for one versus another, we can do that. Right. It can be different standards. You wouldn't know what I mean by that. You wouldn't be able to apply a different uh, quiet hour or anything like that, right? It's all the same standard. It's just how you. We have it. a quiet hour throughout yeah, right. the entire village. Yeah, it's right. already in our code. So much, so many things that yeah. we're looking at are already addressed right. in, in right. an existing right. code. I'm just. I'm okay moving forward without the hundred feet distance. That's just all I'm really trying to get at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? The only place you have 100 feet is in the MUEC. Yeah. Did we already amend that to have 100 feet in another district? Yeah, well? you could include it as well in the uh, TDD. Upper? The yeah, upper? the upper and the first floor. First floor is zero. Yeah, but we still want to, might as well put the 100 feet in the code because if somebody eventually adjusts the zero, and if you're going to create the mechanism to change the number, you might as well put the I, I would. I would yeah, it doesn't make sense because it's already yeah, zero. Okay. Unless it's a permitted use in that zone, we shouldn't put a qualifier on it because it looks like you screwed up. <laughs> right. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so just, right. the, just the TBD upper floor? Yep. You want to add that in? TBD upper, have it be only oh, if. Okay, that's the action item there. What else? Yep. Yeah, I agree. Okay. <laughs> Other than that, I think mm -hmm. the numbers are fine. Mm -hmm. If I can skip down to below that table, but in the same section, um, there is. Let's see, let me just pull this up. I'm looking at uh, number 10, all applications referred to the planning board for non owner occupied on this single family. Oh, thank planning. you. Uh, short term rental permit shall be subject mm -hmm. to a public hearing held by the planning board. So this delegates to the planning board. I believe that based on the the lack of specific criteria on which they would make a determination, I don't feel that this would be appropriate to issue to the planning board. And instead, I would, um, given the limited volume and the lack of concrete criteria, keep this in front of the village board until the point at which we've been able to articulate what the list of criteria are that would be used as a, a basis for the appointed board members. That would be my proposal for that. I would agree with that because it's no, it's so new and we're basically writing the local law. So we should probably fill it out on our own first before we delegate. We, we have had issues in the past also with the appointed board members, um, with some of them feeling that they were not able to issue a determination because of lack of concrete criteria from our board. Um, and so I actually agree with them in, in many cases on that. So I would prefer to just not open up that problem and uh, maintain it ourselves until we've got that more properly refined. Any thoughts, Lily? I had a question mark mm -hmm. next to that as well. Mm -hmm. And I, any dis previous discussions that we've had, we had uh, had it in the, the venue of the village board as mm -hmm. far as special use permits for this particular use. One of the reasons why I, I think it's more compelling for the village board is because it is a sensitive issue for residents. And they, I think for them to feel heard with the planning board, they have to follow the code. They're, that is their, their charge, mm -hmm. to follow the code. 
And with the village board, there's a little bit more flexibility, right. if you will, because they, they are responsive Discretion. to their constituents. Right. So I think it more rightly sits with the village board. In the future, perhaps once it's more established, um, we understand how things, then we can consider changing it to the planning board. But I think at this time, the village board would be the more responsive board. So would the action item then be to direct the attorney to change that? To village board. Yes, the two instances of, of planning board um, and in general section 10 to uh, maintain this with the village board. Okay, Jeff, you've got that? Yes. Okay, thank you. What else? On that topic, just same topic. Um, the special permit conditions in how they were crafted, um, that would be the instruction to us or the planning board, right? Are there, and then there's other special permit conditions that are embedded in the special permitting process. Um, not conditions. These are conditions of the special permit considerations. Mm -hmm. There are other considerations. All right. But as Justin has indicated, there are no considerations set forth in this code. That right. So we can put some considerations in. Okay. Yeah. I, but, I would put some in later and, and frame Okay, so the idea would be... a starting point because there's things already embedded in our code, which is what I was mentioning earlier. That the considerations some of this is already come addressed up, in may, other may parts come to light as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Considerations may be more obvious. Okay, so the idea would be to do one or two of these and then craft some code that we like and then just push it off to the planning board then. Sure. Yeah. Once we feel yeah, like okay. it's pretty right, sad. You know, starting point. Okay, okay. what else? Um, let's come back. Right, I'm gonna. Did you have anything? Are you already still on special permit I conditions can. number 11? I'm okay with it. There's anything in there that jumps off. I mean, keep in mind too, like the special permit is dependent upon the rental permit. Mm -hmm. So you can grant a special permit, and mm -hmm. part of the condition of the special permit is that a rental permit is on file and active and mm -hmm. in force. Is that I didn't. I just want to make sure, Jeff, that's in here, right? One of the conditions is that a rental permit has been issued and is active? It is not. Can we put it in there? Of course. All right. Everybody agree with that? Makes sense. You start with a, you start with a rental permit, whether you're a short-term or long-term rental. Yep. And, so, and uh, just, to, just to make people aware, in case that you weren't um, in the previous workshops, the Board of Trustees um, did pass legislation to set up a short-term and long-term rental directory throughout the entire village, um, which I think is a good thing. There's you know, public safety, just an annual inspection, that kind of thing, and kind of know where everybody is. So um, kind of a starting point there. So if we can go to B, E, which is the next page. Which one? Was, I'm sorry. Where B, are you? E, the next page. Okay. So right now it's, it reads, any single family dwelling or dwelling unit currently used for the purpose of short-term rentals, which use is prohibited by the requirements and prohibitions of this section, shall be entitled to continue such use for a period of two years from the date of filing of this local law with the Secretary of State. Yeah. So we had talked about timing here. So I wanted to talk again about how people feel about the two-year time, People we've thrown out one year uh, in the past, so right now it's reading two years. So does everybody understand that this is a, a part of the legislation that um, Trustee Cove's addressing? And I think this is an important piece, because I think this is really where there's a lot of concerns across the board, um, that if you um, currently are operating a short-term rental in an area that is now being excluded from this drafted legislation, uh, right now, the board is looking at a two-year period to essentially sunset uh, the um, short-term rental. Yeah. May I clarify? Mm -hmm. Sure. I think what we're talking about actually is that that way of operating, but they would be able to continue to operate as an owner-occupied hosted. So the sure. short-term rental would still exist, but under different regulations. Exactly. Exactly. So you're absolutely right on, on that technical level. Um, but clearly it affects um, people who are here tonight, I know, or people maybe are tuning in. 
Um, so this is a good mm -hmm. point of discussion, and I know people do want to weigh in on that. And, and Lisa, thank you for you know picking up on that as well. Um, so what were your thoughts on that? So Can I stop for a minute? Yeah. Just what, what Willie just said is not what's written here. Okay. What's written there? This is unpopular. I'm seeing it. That permitted, short-term rentals are permitted. Currently. If you are, if you are the owner and you are hosting. It doesn't say owner. No, it says any single family any dwelling single. or dwelling so any. currently used for the worst of short-term rentals, which is prohibited by the requirements and prohibitions of this section, shall be entitled to continue such, such use. Mm -hmm. For a period of two years. So, mm -hmm. if there's some other thing that is going to apply, we've got to put it in here. It has to, there should be another line of, to clarify it. Well, that's no. the intention. Yeah. Really, right. your, your comment, I think, is different. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So, this is the special permitting for non owner occupied, non single family. Okay. So, what I think you're saying is if this was shorter or you know, some different duration, Mm -hmm. By right embedded in the code that we've talked about right. before, somebody could still reside there and rent a hosted short-term rental. Yeah, it's, it's a completely uniquely different business model, but business model. That, that is permitted by how the code would be. But written. is there enough clarity in this statement? I think so because this it statement on what the board wants. Right. This statement only applies if a special yeah. permit is required, right. and it's a special just... permit is required only if you want an unhosted. Right. Um, <laughs> short-term rental, mm -hmm. yes. right? If you want a hosted short-term rental, my understanding of this code right now, Jeff, is uh, while you need a rental that. permit, you don't right. need a special permit. Correct, if it's a hosted. Mm -hmm. If it's right. hosted, yeah. Okay, and I think we're so all okay with that. That's the part we... Yeah, I think, I think we're all okay agree. with that. The special permit only applies mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. unhosted mm -hmm. rentals, for somebody greater than 15 days. Okay, and then Justin, you were going to add something. Um, maybe just that uh, we, uh, Trustee Landfear did mention that other business use cases um, would not fall under this provision, um, and I think that there's also another recourse embedded in the code, which I believe we'll get to later, which is the hardship provision, um, where uh, owners that are operating under this model, um, which would otherwise be sunset, are able to apply. Um, given the particular conditions for an extension of, of the uh, use. So to, to that end, mm -hmm. and Jeff, you talked a little bit on the hardship, but I think these two things are uniquely connected. Yeah. One of the challenges I had with the hardship provision is there's nothing in, in it that has a suggested duration mm -hmm. of the extension. There is. All right, share with me what it is. I should have seen I it. don't have page numbers. Oh, I'm having uh, a <laughs> two. Okay, so we're on the page before the end. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Uh, uh, here's the hardship. So I'm reading through the hardship. Keep going. I'm there. I, I think there. we're jumping there. ahead now. I think no, no, it's important. But they're, they're all connected. I, I, I know they're connected. So because if, if, yeah. if the, the board, so a majority of the board decides I'm to sunset some of the existing STRs, there's a a clause for hardship. Right. So they are connected. I agree with yeah. Trustee Marshall. In deciding the appeal, the board shall grant the minimum continued use of the property as a short term rental that it deems necessary and adequate, while at the same time preserving and protecting the character of the neighborhood and the health and safety. In addition, the board trustees. Too. This is the very last. No. Yes. Is this a C? Yes. Yeah, okay. In addition, the Board of Trustees shall be entitled to grant such conditions as it feels necessary and appropriate in permitting the continued use of the property as a short-term rental, including the right to place a limitation of time on such continued use. So, Jeff, come back to your answer to my question. The decision is very open-ended. It could be five years. It could be two years. It could be one right. year. It could be six months. It will be the intention is to be the length of time that is required by the financial hardship. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. you, can you expand on that? So if you just heard this, the intention is to... I mean, that was my intention. Yeah, yeah but, but please expand on that just for everybody here. So we kind of we have something... My intention in drafting this was mm -hmm. to drive the continuation of um, not conforming STRs mm -hmm. with the financial proof presented to the village board indicating 
when a reasonable return would be derived from the use. So that we're driven by financial, mm -hmm. not arbitrary, we think this, we think that. Right, so if you currently own an STR and it doesn't meet the parameters right. of the legislation that's currently in draft, there is an opportunity for an STR owner to appeal with a hardship case saying that they have not yet made a reasonable rate of return on their investment. That is what this board is discussing. Just to so that was my intention. Yeah. So that the mm -hmm. finances mm -hmm. would drive it rather than yeah. right. something else. And so, right, exactly. So it's sort of data driven. Mm -hmm. um, and so right now the board is looking at two years of essentially sunsetting out the existing short-term rentals that do not comply with the parts of this legislation. And if you need to go beyond that, you would have to apply for a hardship case. That's what's under discussion right now with the board. So the way it's written now, um, let's use this example, an STR owner is running their business and they are up until the two year after this has been you know, adopted, they're on that last day of the two year period. And then they decide to appeal on that very last day. Well, yeah, I think this was a later email, which I didn't incorporate. I'm sorry. You want to understand. Yeah, this was in a later email that uh, I sent out that I have not incorporated yet. I think the time to file the hardship application is the time the statute's enacted. Can can you say that differently, yes, Cindy? Yeah. So so the, you, you pass the statute. It's yeah. it's like this, except there's going to be a provision that uh, the hardship application needs to be filed within 90 days, 120 days of the adoption of the statute. When they have that 120 days to prove the two years is not enough. Would that same thing? I, I think I understand where you're going. Would that same thing be accomplished by just shortening the? Um, kind of the sunset. 220 days, yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, that, you could do that, but yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, I, I don't really have an opinion one way or another, but I, those yeah, things certainly. would accomplish about the same thing. Certainly. So the difference, I think, would be if, if what you just said holds true, that you have to file the appeal within 60 or 90 days or 120 days, whatever it may be, then if you left it as it is with the two years, it would be whichever is longer. <laughs> Mm -hmm. the hardship appeal or two years. Right. So somebody could present a hardship appeal and you could determine that only 18 months is necessary for this to be a reasonable, profitable venture. That could be your determination. But yet they could still maintain that as a short-term rental unhosted for mm -hmm. two years term because that would be what would be stated here as the exemption. So the, the question I think before us is, do we want to allow a, two-year uh, period of time or something less that's only uh, able to be done by hardship. I'd like to bring back to the board another option that we did talk about and I just and maybe there were other reasons that our attorney could help us with um, the idea of grandfathering what's existing that is non-conforming at this point. What would that look like? It might look like just deleting all this and allowing them to continue as pre-existing non-conforming uses. Yeah, it well, no, you would still have a special thing, but you'd have everything except to say uh, uses existing as of the date of the ordinance um, shall be allowed to continue as a pre-existing non-conforming use and shall terminate as further provided in the zoning code. I understand that that could be done. I guess the way that I'm looking at the code now, this is not a desired use um, that we want to encourage in those cases. Um, and so I would be. Hang on. Point of order, please. Point of order. Just, just speak up. Speak up. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I, I would be in favor of shortening the, uh, the period from application for hardship. Um, whether that's accomplished by having a, a concrete uh, timeline or just taking that one clause that says two years and making that 180. And during the 180 time period, the STR would be able to continue business as usual, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, you know, I think this is really an important point of, of discussion, and I know people are here to speak, and we're approaching 7 o'clock, and we're trying to be mindful of time. Um, I'd like the board to, to consider entertaining just comments from the public and anybody online. I have one just clarification a, question. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I do. Lily, I just sure. want to point out that um, regarding the special use permit, that again under 155-7, revocation of special permit, I think um, the board may wish to direct the attorney to revisit that um, section as well because it names the planning board as the. Uh, oh, to just be consistent. Uh, to be yeah. consistent. Yeah. consistent. Yeah. We'll 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 155-7B. The very first Bring it back to the village board. Right, yeah. That would be the action. Thank you. Good catch. So, Mayor, if we could, I wouldn't mind mm -hmm. seeing where the board stands on this and then bring it up to the public rather mm -hmm. than make that. Okay, let's let's close item. this out so and then I, I would like to hear. So and I know we all want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. So need a clarification one yeah, one more thing. Yeah. So, so my okay. thought on this is current existing non conforming use, I don't want to be permanent. I don't want, you know, where there have been short term rentals that have come into existence. Yeah. Whether or not for our own delay on the board, this board or prior boards, I don't want that to be a reason why uh, somebody will forever have a neighbor as a short term rental. Everybody has their own determination as to whether or not it's a value or not, but the vast majority of residents that I've spoke to would prefer not to have a short term rental as a primary uh, neighbor. Well, that being said, um, I do think that there are a number of short term. Um, uh, rental owners here who are not owner occupied um, that are businesses, right? They've essentially created a business in a residential zone, even though technically up until now or whenever a code may be adopted, it was considered a residential use. My thought would be to recognize that they may have people staying here in the village a year out, right? <laughs> they, they, they could very well have um, people who have signed up for next year or July 4th or um, the canal. So, so my thought would be to ensure that the appeal has to be heard within 90 days, but to limit it to one year. And that should cover the majority of four, right? And then what that would suggest is that we have to hear the appeals within 90 days or 180 days. Like that's the conclusion of it. We make our determination. And if something is immediately profitable and, and possibly there is no financial hardship that they can present as to why they must you know, continue, the fact is we still grant one year out of consideration for the fact that we acted slower than as a board we necessarily could have. If the board decides to go shorter than that, I'm comfortable with that, knowing that the hardship appeal will create the opportunity to extend that out, uh, should they so choose. Uh, but I definitely think the appeal should be heard and if we have to put it in code, um, rather than rely on what's understood, um, I would say 120 to 150 days. Okay, Lily, thank you. Uh, this is a procedural question. I'm wondering if the board might entertain uh, the following process. We have a number of people, not only online, but who have also written in. I wonder if we might alternate between people who are present to make their statement and then to switch to somebody who has uh, sent in and, and just go back and forth rather than try to put all. Yeah, I'd like to speak to that because um, we have residents obviously that want to reach out to our board. Um, you know, the, the comments that we receive are comments to be made directly to the board. It is not about, you know, making it to each other. Um, and when we receive the emails, we've all received, I know, emails from different residents and I'm assuming the board has read them. I have not. What? I do not believe, I, Excuse me, I do not believe that I have read all of them. I do not okay. believe that I have um, received all of the emails. Every email that you've gotten, so forwarded. Um, every email you've gotten, you forwarded. Trustee Lanthier mentioned that um, outside of email, she may have gotten a comment or so from residents that they sent an email, but we hadn't been able to figure out which residents didn't get through. Okay. So just encouraging to send so, them to the trustees as a whole or to the clerk. In other words, we, I have as many comments as we received, yes. Right, and okay. if the board has read them, then the board has received the comments. Um, I, Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, are we supposed to read every every email that the board receives? So These have become part of our record, you know, for that's the that's board. A for, that's a question for the board. But I'm just saying that it's typically, we don't have to necessarily do it. With This is people weighing in that the, we receive the opinions. It just takes a lot of time. They're writing 
and we've read they them. They will be entered into the record yeah. this week. Yes, they're always on the record. So, Absolutely. I, but it's entirely the concern is, is that because we're trying to be transparent for everybody to hear about what's happening, other residents may not have been able to read these comments. They I mean, are part, part, they of, minutes, part yes. of the record. This, this is transparent. There's nothing that is not transparent about this. Any comment we receive from the public becomes part of the record, period. It's, it's transparent. But if you want to go ahead and read everything, we'll add on another hour. So, well, I'm just I, I, the two that you know, were attached to our minute, to our packet said specific request. They specifically requested that, that it be read at the meeting. So course, I'm they just can, repeating they, they what can they request, but you know. Okay, let's do it. Let's let's okay. read it all. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to come back. I want to come back to the time periods because we need to instruct Jeff mm -hmm. to put this yeah. down in pen and paper. So I'm just going to throw my two numbers out there, and then we can go around the room if mm -hmm. we want to. I don't care the order. But let's figure out time for appeal. Let's figure out the time for appeal, and let's figure out the duration of uh, the permit where this chapter would not apply. So my opening salvo will be 120 days um, maximum and one year maximum. So Dave, if I could just ask a clarifying question on that. Um, my understanding from before is that it, there might be, a, and maybe I misinterpreted, there might be a problem with saying that there is one year to sunset because that really depends on the determination of the appeal. You know, we might end up saying that based on the financial circumstances, it's two years. So we would be predetermining a little bit, it seems, by putting that number in code. Could we do whichever is longer? Well, I know. I mean, I think neither have, they don't have anything to do with each other. Uh, they have it. They have the, an owner, a pre existing owner, would have the right, absolute right, to continue within a year. They don't think a year is enough, they have 120 days to file a hardship yeah. Yeah. From, from the date the statute is Okay. So, is that what you're That's saying? What that there would be 120 days um, as a, a fixed number and then um, one year? And then, so they have, to yeah. just point, they have 120 days, we can do 90, whatever some number of days to submit a hardship appeal that says that one year is not enough and here's why. Okay, so so just so so we're all understanding this, um, once this legislation is enacted, if it is, um, anybody who has an STR right now that doesn't conform to the parameters of the legislation will have one year to close out their business. Yes. Or change it to a long-term rental or whatever that would look like or yes. sell or do whatever. One year. Right. Um, if, if there is a financial hardship or a burden placed on you in that way financially, that's provable, then you have 120 days after this legislation is enacted. I think it's so, got to be at least 120 days because the financial proof is going to take a long time. You know, I mean, I'm thinking, yeah. to me, I think it's, yeah. I, I think it's a hard. This is, yeah. that's a big deal. Jeff, That's would, a big deal. Would would there be notice requirements to those owners? I mean, I, I would think as a courtesy, um, you know, would we send a, a letter to the uh, the residents that are being rented that way, or just allow for the normal provisions of, of uh, adopting code and publishing um, the secretary? Think, certainly, if we knew of them, then it would be courtesy to send them. We would have to. I think we there's send no them expectation. There's no expectation or requirement. No. But I think I think it'd be should. nice to do so. Yeah. But for sure. Okay. You know, there's I would be out, you know, I, I would I would think about 160 days because that's what four months is that's five months, right? And it's not a lot of time to gather the financial right. information you need. So that's just to file the appeal, that's not to perfect the appeal or hear the appeal. Right, right. That's just to right. file. It's a could, notice notice could, of filing. Could you give me an understanding as to how long the appeal process takes once it's filed, how long it, we have to hear it? You tighten it up in here. And then you can say you can do it like the where you can put time limits on the state and approval and stuff like that if you want. You got uh, blank days within the filing of the appear, uh, appeal to hear it. Um, you've got blank days from the hearing to make a decision. Does the appeal, when you file the appeal, that would contain all the financial information? Yeah. Correct. Right. Yeah. So then, 150 days would be five months, roughly. And then make a determination within 60. Can we put that on this board? We already have something in the code. Um, I thought it was 90 days. If 90 days to file in other cases, 
That's correct. This one might be. So in this case, you want to double that amount of time? I mean, we could go that. I mean, go 120. Um, with the, the, you could always consider an extension, right? So should somebody come before us? Have a provision question? for an extension, right? And then number of appeals. Do we have to document that? They're, no. They're, so, it's, no, it's fine. They, they, they appeal once. If they've got a change of circumstances, they appeal again. If they have a change of circumstances. Thanks. Hang on one second. Point of order. We're, I'm trying to get to. I know you're trying very hard. Point of order. I know. It's, it's, Thank you, Mayor. We're trying here. So keep going. Well, just to clarify, this this is not the public forum. That this is a trusty workshop, and you are more than welcome to speak. But the public forum is different. And as mayor, I'd like to clarify: we have always taken public opinion in any of these workshops. Which so, we will. Right. Yeah. Which we will. So, but That's I mean, right. I, we're Which just we trying to keep it moving here. So, so my first thought is 120 a year, and if the hardship appeal comes back and a reasonable return is not received within able to be received within a year then we look at a longer extension of that and by no means is that a grandfather and it's just a respect to the business owner that a reasonable rate of return on their investment uh, should be with you know forthcoming yeah. right and, and able so uh, the length of that appeal or the result of that appeal uh, is not predetermined it's not as though it's embedded in it's only six months it's an open-ended uh, thoughtful consideration by this board to the business owner to have a appeal process and um, whether or not it's 150 days or 120 days, but I'd like a determination within 60. I mean, these things shouldn't yes. drag on for business owners. I think at least Absolutely. 150, just because it's a lot of moving parts. Sure. Here. So, you know, really, so I, there's if, a lot of moving parts. I'm comfortable with 150 do this. days as long as we're making a decision in 60. If yes. you want to go 120 with 90, but I think we keep it a relatively mm -hmm. concise time period to get yes. this. Yeah. I, I agree with that. And I, I think that as long as this uh, window starts with for application with the adoption of the code, that's what I was thinking in, in that range. Yeah. So, Okay. Does, Any it, other? does it have to be documented that it starts with the application or with the with the passing of the legislation? Oh, right. that, that the appeal has a certain number of days once this once this is enacted. moved to local right. law. Once you file the appeal, mm -hmm. yeah, that's mm -hmm. once fifty days. Mm -hmm. So that that would start with the filing of this code with mm -hmm. the Secretary of State. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's in there. It okay. will be with Jeff. So then, are we directing Jeff for a hundred and twenty days? Or One fifty. Hundred and fifty. That's five months. Yeah. 150 and 30 and 30. Okay. Yes. Why 30 and 30? 30 to hear and 30 to decide. Oh, so that gives you 60. That gives us a yeah. 60. Based on meeting schedules, I think that could be reasonable with the uh, summer schedule. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the hearing could be very difficult within mm -hmm. 30 days because of the. Um, Can there be a provision for an extension? Public, public notice. Or as best as practicable. Uh, okay. Okay. I still am going back to uh, paragraph E, and I do apologize, but I got to get this stuff out of it. Yeah. It better works. Um, is it going to be that they can continue for the one year period as they did pre existing with the code? This is where Lily said something about being only unposted or something. This so I'm at I'm at E. I'm at yeah, oh, right. five or E. E would turn into one year. Okay. But there's not going to be any other conditions on it. No, so E is essentially one year. Okay. And then you have the hardship appeal within. Right. Yeah, yeah, I got it. And so essentially it becomes whichever is longer. My point was to what is the use look like for that year? As, as to continue as business as usual. Right? Yeah, no, okay. That's right. That's right. You know? Okay. Um, and there may be, just, just on the yeah. hardship comment, mm -hmm. it may be that people have um, their place rented out in the 13th month, 14th month, 15th mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. And they may come before us with an appeal and say, these are already rented out as mm -hmm. part of, and you know, we may look at that and say, okay, based on these conditions, mm -hmm. A, B, C. Mm -hmm. um, but I would just venture to anybody who brings appeals forward that include um, rentals beyond the one-year term, 
um, it will be my request to see when those were rented. Mm -hmm. And if they were rented out within after the adoption of this code, I will not necessarily look at that as a favorable response as to why you extend a hardship. Okay, so <laughs> any other quick comments before, you know, I know people uh, I, are interested to speak. I, I would just ask our um, uh, attorney if there's anything else that we could clarify. Well, this is for the board. Well, I, I think we're the last. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Okay, um, then I would like to open up um, some comments and, and I know everybody really feels strongly about things and we really appreciate you um, being here. And I know you've been sitting patiently. Um, two minutes, please. And um, I would, if anybody would like to comment, please, let's start with people who have not yet commented, who are maybe here for the first time and we'll also be taking comments online as well. I have four from email too. And, and there's some, okay, coming in as well. Okay, that's great too. Um, anybody wishing to speak, you can please come up and we have a podium and name and address, please. Hi, Louisa. Hi, my name is Dr. Louisa Pearson. I am um, a retired, retired from the Institute for Research and Reform and Education. I give those um, qualifications um, to the groups. Um, I need some clarification on a couple of things. Um, my understanding is that this is something that is being done because we're concerned about the safety of the village. Is that correct? No, not only. Um, my, and the other point that I think Dave brought to the fore was that um, you would like younger population in this community. Not necessarily. Well, I hope not because I'm very elderly. <laughs> so, um, okay. Now, um, a couple of things. It is my understanding that, uh, Lisa, you went around the community and asked people for their input about uh, STRs, is that correct? No, when I was campaigning, it was one of the topics that came up. Okay, no one ever asked me this. You know, okay. I, I wonder if, if there's know, a second point, point of order. order, please. We have we have a yeah, residence well, meeting. And, and also, I, I believe that this is not necessarily a back and forth between the board and people commenting, but we're accepting public input. And okay, I just wanted some clarification separate. before I started. I'm very sorry, Justin, I apologize. Um, no one asked me for my opinion as to what I thought on this. One minute. One minute, okay. okay. It's a two minute, yeah. Uh, yeah, They're I just trying to be. Okay. Um, I live in a neighborhood which is part of the area that you're targeting. Um, and I am, it, it, I own my own house on that, in that square block, there are 10 houses, I believe, there may be more. Half of them are rentals, half of them are owner owned. One of them, does STRs. That neighbor is absolutely immaculate. Everything is well taken care of. I have never ever had a problem with anything that has ever happened in that um, in that um, STR. And I want that to go on record that there that no one has asked me about this as somebody who owns my own house. Do I mind having a, an STR in my backyard? I love it. She's a fabulous neighbor. The people who come there are very nice and very polite. And I really question the purpose. Okay, one more second. I also want to know, is there money in the budget for the compliance officers to take care of all these provisions that you're laying out? Thank you. Thank you very much you. For, you, for your input. Is, is there anyone else wishing? What, what was the address, I'm sorry? 14 South Street. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to comment who hasn't before yet? And then we'll circle back in. Christine Doggett, D-O-G-G-E-T-T. Could you speak up, please? Yeah, Christine Doggett, D-O-G-G-E-T-T. Nobody speaks up here, so she really speak up so everybody can hear her. Not you. Okay, point of order. Thanks for bringing that up, Jean. Thank you. Okay. Yes. 73 Crestview Drive. So I don't reside in the village. However, I maintain um, a few of the Airbnbs. Um, they're gorgeous. They're so well maintained. I've gotten to know so many people around them because I'm there quite often. Everyone could not be more pleasant. Um, born and raised here, by the way. Born and raised um, in Pittsburgh. I feel like we're driving uh, businesses right straight to Fairport. Um, that's just what my gut is that the village of Pittsburgh is doing. Um, I have never heard one person complain about any of these uh, properties whatsoever. 
Um, I will say, if you, I was very confused about the time frames here. It went from 20 to 180, whatever, but that's not today. Um, I just don't understand it. I mean, we've grown up here, we're still here, our kids are here, blah, 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 blah. If you do take this away, you're taking a huge part of my income away. Also, I just wanted to know. Um, I don't understand it. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Yeah. Anyone else? And, and also, I know we have online and some what, emails. Yes. Yeah. Please, please come up. Yes. Thank you. We'll do so. <laughs> Thank you. Name and address, please. Uh, Tom Bell, yeah. 7 Jackson Park. Thank you for listening. Um, I was going to echo what uh, Dr. Pearson said. Um, we have short term rental right next door to us. And I have rental houses around me as well. Um, Lisa and Dave asked me of my opinion uh, in the winter, and I gave it to them. And they looked at the short-term rental. It's much better, much better maintained than the rentals around us. Um, and I've had one time when my wife Colleen and I weren't really pleased with the people there, and it was pretty minor where they parked. Really. Um, other than that, everybody has been fabulous. Um, they're excited to come to the village and enjoy it. Um, the people next door right now are from Spain. Um, the renters, um, if you don't like them, they're there for a year, right? And they might not maintain their yard, or the owner doesn't maintain the yard as I have today. One minute, thanks. Um, lastly, and uh, Mayor Plummer used the term beta driven earlier, not related to this, but have there been specific complaints about short term rentals? And are they in a greater proportion than complaints about long-term rentals? Is that what drove this decision, or is it just anecdotal? That's what I would ask. Thank, okay, you. thank you. Thank you very much for your input. Yeah. And, and actually, I, I can uh, respond to um, the data on complaints about specifically about short-term rentals. Rentals. Uh, when uh, we did ask our code enforcement officer. Uh, there has only been one, and it was rectified within two hours. Yeah. I'm Colleen. Uh, I live at 7 Jackson Park. Um, I did speak with Dave and Lisa when they were campaigning and told them I prefer the short-term rental that is next to me. We have seven houses on our street. Two are long-term rentals. We've had significant problems. I have gone to Steve. Um, on the balcony, if I didn't have a fence, I would have to constantly look at the disrepair of the house there that is not owner occupied. He does a long term rental. I had to complain about a month ago because the grass was this high. This happens every year. Mm -hmm. So I have difficulty with the fact that we seem to be going after the short term rentals when we have a significant problem with the long-term rentals. Even the ones, there are two on my street that he keeps in good care, but I've had to deal with their renters. Giant trucks and boats parked in front of my house. My bedroom's in the front. I can literally hear every word they say. Their son was roaring around the village and everybody knew it about the Bronco, but where's your compliance officer? These are real problems. Everyone next to us has been lovely. And they're there for a little bit of time rather than me being subjected for a long period of time. And I do believe you need to grandfather the people who've made a significant investment in our community. These long term rental people are really not, it's the owner is, but the renters do not have an investment. They do not care. So I think you got to look at this both ways, and it, it doesn't feel like it is. Thank you. Thanks for your input. May yeah. I I'll just jump in? Okay. Sure. Yeah. Dave. If I may. So one of the challenges with long-term rentals. Sorry, I'll speak up. One, one of the challenges with long-term rentals, specifically with regards to property upkeep, um, has to do with we haven't had a rental permit at all in place in this community up until just recently, and the rental permit uh, provides that Steve goes in and inspects the home 
but it also gives conditions by which, if complaints, there's opportunities for us for that rental permit to be revoked. So one of the challenges about thinking about short-term rentals and long-term rentals from a uh, compliance with the outside purview, right, may be that the rental permit process that we just recently put in place may be able to address some of those concerns by the simple fact that rental permits can be revoked if there are complaints or persistency on the uh, owner. So it's just a thought to say that we hope that it may change moving forward for the experience that you've had with long-term rentals based on the fact that there's a new rental permit in place. Again, it will come down to compliance and enforcement mm -hmm. and some other considerations, but it, it is a step in the right direction with regards to that concern specifically. I know it doesn't refute your comments on short-term rentals. Yes, because I complained and I've gone to it. And he can go and yep. have a good reflection on that. Thank you. We don't have the rental <laughs> permit. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have the rental <laughs> permit. Yeah, there is a point of work. Yeah. yeah. There is. But, there is. So it's yep. just something new that's coming forward. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very Should much. There's somebody online. Okay. We, there's I'd no one live. I'd, I'd like to be able to run the meeting here. <laughs> okay. So hang on. Point of order. Yes. We, we do have, have some comments. Three attendees online. No one is raising their hand. Okay. Um, I have four email comments. Uh, two of which have commented before. Um, Bob Michaels and. Uh, do we have any new comments? John to... Lundbeck, I have mm -hmm. two new comments. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter Berzini and Linda Brisbane. Peter also commented before as well in, by email. Uh, would you like me? Can you read Linda's please? Yes. Yep, she, we haven't heard from her. I will well, we have. The board has already received this and has read it. Um, but now it will be read for all of you. And as we all know, it is also always part of the record. And I'll pick up the pace to get through it too. At Deer Village Board of Pittsburgh, I'm writing to express my opposition to allowing short-term rentals of the Village of Pittsburgh. As board members, you have been elected to not only serve the residents of the village, but to protect the character of the village that has been decades in the making, and to prevent limit changes that have the potential to negatively impact this character. This responsibility should not be taken lightly or ignored based on property owner threats of legal action should STRs not be allowed. This other the dam threat clearly defines the selfish attitude many STR property owners have. Weighing need versus want is an important consideration in this discussion. Who benefits the most from short-term rentals? The STR owner, the neighbors who live next door from the STR, the village, individuals looking to purchase a home in the village for themselves or families, Clearly, the benefit is the SDR owner. Short-term rentals limit or reduce the effect of neighborhood. Transient guests do nothing to foster the sense of community within the village and on the street the property exists. It reduces the stock of available houses for purchase by individual families who want to enjoy the character of the village has to offer. Establishing a formal policy allowing SDRs opens the door for real estate investors with no interest in the village to purchase homes, often outpricing local residents. Many consider this only a big city issue, but Pittsburgh and its village are a desirable area. Do you really want to take that risk? Why implement a policy for there will be a little recourse should it negatively, negatively impact the residents and the village? I often hear from STR supporters, I've never heard of any problems with that. Well, my response is, how would you know? Unless you were next door to one, you wouldn't. There is no mechanisms to report issues. Often the property owner does not live on site. Just because there hasn't been issues doesn't mean there won't be in the future. What recourse will residents have if there are no problems? Who do they report to? Will the village government take responsibility? How are the compliments handled? What is the follow-up policy? Will how will properties be monitored? If you can't enforce extra policy on a consistent basis, it's worthless. Yes, two minutes. Yes, two minutes. Two, hang on, point of order, please. With village taxes on a steady climb, there's a zero reason to incur the administrative overhead that would be required to administer the policy. Okay, so um, a lot of those questions that have been asked in that letter have been answered. We have a rental registry that you, you've just talked, you know, that would address a lot of, of those concerns. And um, we can leave it at that. And thank you for that input. Is that person a village resident? Excuse me, one second. Point of order. You're not, you're not recognized. Yes, they are a village resident. Linda? Yeah, they, they, Linda Brisbane, 30 Locust Street. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, hang on. Yeah. Any other comments? Yes. Name and address, please. Hi. I'm Joan Barnes. I live at 22 Washington Road 
and they are the right next door to the new short term rental. We had had nothing but absolute pleasure from having them there. They have kept the uh, property very, very well. The people that come in, we'll see the car come in and maybe somebody walking out the driveway. No sound. In fact, the only sounds I sometimes hear is the train going by yeah. often. And also, every now and then, you'll hear something from Pittsburgh Hall. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. nothing from next door. Mm -hmm. They keep the property wonderful. Mm -hmm. They are just super people that they rent to, and we welcome them. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. How long have you lived in the village? I lived, well, I lived in public department store yeah. for um, 10 years. Yep. And then I married, and I had been living on Washington Road for 50 years. 50 years. And my yeah. husband was born in, actually, he was born in the village. <laughs> Many years, I'm going to skip his age. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But, okay. Yeah. Good to Thank see you. you. Thank you. Super. Thank you so Thank much. You Appreciate the input. Yep. Any other comments, please? Anything online? There's no comment. I have a question. Oh. Okay. You want to come up and, and then uh, can is I, it, who is that? Is that Aaron? Okay. That's just Aaron. Okay. Just one second then. Can I can I just mention mm -hmm. one one thing to clarify mm -hmm. too? I think in the um, as the uh, last speaker was providing her her wonderful comments. There might be a typo in the code. Uh, we have NDR where it should be MDR um, or oh. MDR uh, in the uh, district case. There is no NDR. Right. Okay. Well, we, we can we, we can even take care of it offline. You know. Well, we thank can't you. Have there either. <laughs> <laughs> either way. So there we go. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, name and address, please. Len Parker, 46 Rand Place. For clarification, if the requirements and regulations and code adjustments are being applied to one-year rentals or 30 non-year only. 30 and under only. Days, 30 days. 30 days. SPRs. Mm -hmm. Wait, I don't understand the question. I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? You're discussing regulation yes. being added. Yes. Do they apply? Will is the intention to apply those to properties that are rented for 30 days or more? No, this is short-term rental code. This is short-term only. Short-term applies to fewer than 30 well, days. Yeah. He just wants to clarify short-term versus yeah. long-term. That's correct. Okay. The rental permit I did reference earlier does apply to oh. anybody who may rent beyond 15 days regardless of whether or not it's short-term or long-term. So we heard tonight people like being neighbors like SPIs. People have problems with one-year rentals. We're solving the one that has no problem and we're doing nothing about the one that has no problem. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, any, yes, yeah, sure, come up. Hi, uh, Erin Eater, 23 Allen Parkway. I am a short-term rental owner, as you know. Um, one of the things I found really super interesting is when I was able to finally find the committee reports that were given to the board, um, which was really, really difficult. I went to like the committee section on the website, it went there, so I had to dig, 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 but thankfully I had to dig. Anyway, there were two reports there that I noticed. And from one of them, it looks like it was one person who wrote a report, very lengthy one, and added qualifications to it, which I found super interesting because as I research these qualifications, they are non-existent for the most part. I reached out to um, some real estate professionals that I know and did some research on this person who said that they had some things in their past that they really doesn't seem to be true. So where, where are we going with right. this? Right. What we're going to is the other one that had the recommendations that seemed very reasonable. One minute. Yep. Seemed really super reasonable. And this is um, the things that looks like they did a ton of research. It looks like that they actually have some really good relevant points 
um, they talk about their conclusion, a harmonious coexistence between the historical charm of the village and the potential benefits of tourism could be achieved by doing some regulations on short term rentals. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it does seem as if grandfathering in the ones that are currently renting, where we've had no problems, where we've had wonderful guests, including ones this weekend that were coming to a wedding and that loved it and want to come back. I mean, I don't understand why the committee, the village board, did not actually listen to the report that was given to them. I guess that's it. I, I just don't get it. Last question. What's the process of enacting this legislation? Oh, oh the, the actual yeah, procedure. The process? Well, procedure? At, at some point, if there's a draft that everybody can agree on, it goes to public. We set a date for a public and hearing. And is it voted on by people, or is it only your decision that you've already made your mind up clearly? It's voted on by the board. The board, the board enacts the legislation. Board. The board enacts legislation. Okay, so there is no recourse except for maybe litigation if there's if it goes through. No, what was the appeal? What, it, it was the appeal process. There, Jeff, do you want to speak to this? Hang, hang on one second. Yeah. Yeah. The legislation. I, I'm curious. So if the legislation is enacted by you because you are the ones making the decision, we've heard tons and tons of comments that don't understand why you're doing this. You're, you're trying to fix a problem that doesn't need to be fixed, where there's lots of other problems. So what I don't understand is how it's just going to be up to you. And when, there's plenty of people who have spoken, who have written, who have suggested very reasonable accommodations to address any concerns that there might be. I do understand corporations coming in by definitely not something we want, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so, thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate, sure. appreciate the input and, and, and asking good questions here. Is there anyone else? Do we have any? Okay. I have oh. if you do I get a chance or No, that's fine. That's fine. We took all the new people already, I think. So, oh, okay. yeah. You said you were Last week, I heard. Uh, quiet um, in the audience, please. Like four or five times being pushed that the reason that you guys were looking at this is because we have businesses in residentially zoned areas. Um, at least four or five times. The people who own the houses that are rented long term, don't get it wrong, those are businesses. These people aren't doing it, you know, in the kindness of their heart. So if you're gonna all of a sudden regulate us and say, oh no, no, we're not allowed to use our residents like that to make money, long term rentals shouldn't be allowed. Or you should no, it shouldn't be allowed. If you're gonna take us out of business, take them out of business. 25% of the houses in the village are long-term rentals. Give me a break. And if you're saying that you will let us come for financial hardship, I'm the one that said my husband died, I need this income. There, there's no two ways about it. I bring my hardship to you guys. You guys get to decide if you're gonna deny me my financial issues because that's what you're saying. You will, I have to bring it to you, bring my financials. I have no problem with that. But you have the right to deny me arrogance. Okay, I'm done. The arrogance of this board is incredible. Thank you for your input. Any other comments? Uh, yes, please come up. Oh, Sorry. yep. Um, Steve DeMarco, five subs at board. I, I, am I okay? Is it okay if I ask you guys? Can I ask which of you guys have stayed in the Airbnb? Oh, I have. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I bet I, you, I, every I, one of you have. Yeah, that's those you have to have it. Well, I know, but we're, we're so talking this is here. This not my backyard kind of. I guess. Okay. Thank you for your input. Five times that four. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, last, last couple comments here, and then we'll bring it back to the board and close this out. Name and address, please. Gene Carvel. I live at 5 Silver Pines Drive, Pittsburgh, New York. I have a, a Airbnb at 16 Lincoln Avenue. I have several others. 
I, I would make one comment. Uh, I think to David, you, David Marshall. Yeah. You cannot direct. You, you, you're not supposed to direct comments to. Okay, if, you, if you can just comment generally on the topic at hand. Thank yeah, you. I find it hard to believe. I agree with this young lady this morning that just said something. That this board has the ability to to, uh, to gauge whether somebody has the financial ability to continue on, or uh, you're going to determine when they haven't made enough profit. It doesn't even make any sense. So if we have a hardship, we're going to appeal to you, and then this board that's elected by the people is going to make a decision on whether, with, and I don't think any of you have any financial background whatsoever, and if you do, I think you should prove it to us. You don't have any right to do that. I can't imagine that. So I think it's insulting that you're going to, that you all are going to decide whether we have the financial ability, we made enough money in our early years. Thank you. Okay, we we actually do have, you know, people with financial backgrounds who would we would consult with, I'm sure. So, but I appreciate your input very very much. Was there one last comment? And we're going to bring it back. 